Hello, and David Morrow welcomes you to Harold Park for the running of the 1985 ABC Pacific Coast Pace. As you can see in the background, it's fairly wet and miserable out here at Harold Park this evening. Uh, we did have uh, a respite of about an hour or so of the rain, but earlier on tonight it really did come down in buckets. In fact, uh, it's some of the heaviest rain seen in Sydney for many years, and many people, of course, will remember the floods that Sydney encountered in, in November last year. Well, the rain tonight was just as heavy at the high point or the low point, depending on how you look at the, the very heavy flooding last year, and it was very, very dramatic indeed. And in fact, some of the scenes no doubt that will be seen on uh, papers and also on television tomorrow with some of the, uh, the flooding in areas tonight will be quite staggering. Let's go back and have a look though at some of the scenes from race one and there's some of the heavy rain and that was really after the rain started to, to lighten off a little bit. It was much heavier. You'll see some of the pools of water around the track and this race was run almost 10 minutes late because of two false starts. The horses were slipping all over the place. Uh, they'd uh, actually checked the mobile barrier to ensure that it was safe to run. I watch a lot of the drivers ducking their head, trying to get as low as possible to get some protection uh, from the heavy rain. And you'll notice that the drivers uh, are starting to really get covered in mud back in the field. And it really was a fairly wet start to the evening. The rain persisted for about an hour or so, and then it's eased off uh, probably for the last hour. And in fact, the race will be probably run in fairly dry conditions, although it is starting to sprinkle just a little bit again. And there's a look at the track, and as you can see, it has dried out quite considerably. This track at Harold Park is, is really quite remarkable for draining. Over the years, we've seen, I think, up to six inches of rainfall at the track in uh, the last couple of years, and yet meetings still have managed to continue on because of the magnificent drainage here uh, provided by Bill Small, the course manager, and his wonderful band of merry workers. Well, one of the uh, main... Horses probably in the event tonight will be Glen Sunder number five. And of course, Glen Sunder, one of the outstanding horses, as you can see, some of the, uh, the punters, of course, uh, trying to get some protection from the rain, which is starting to fall again. Glen Sunder in uh, the last few months here in Sydney has really started to take all before him. He's trained by uh, Vic Frost, of course, who is uh, well known throughout Australia as one of the great uh, harness racing trainer drivers over many years. But Glen Thunder really has started to uh, go right through the classes in uh, recent months. He's only a four year old, and yet in this campaign, he's had just seven starts. He's had six brilliant victories, culminating in a magnificent win last Monday night uh, in the Bankstown Cup. And uh, earlier on uh, tonight, Vic Frost, the trainer driver of Glen Thunder, was uh, speaking with Peter Wilkins. Thanks, David. Vic Frost, you haven't got the silks on at the moment, but uh, how do you rate Glenn Thunder's chances in the Pacific Coast pace? Six wins out of the last seven. Well, Peter, um, he's been going very well of late, and uh, he's sort of improved out of all proportion, we sort of feel, and uh, I think everyone would probably agree with that. And uh, we think he'll go very well tonight. How would you compare Glenn Thunder with Area Code, who you had so much success with? Uh, well, Eric Cades is a different type of horse. Eric Cades is a very, very tough stayer, and uh, well, I sort of feel that uh, Glen Thunder's not, not that type of horse. Like, uh, he's uh, Glen Thunder's a nice little race horse, and uh, whereas Eric Cade was, uh, you know, he, he, he wasn't a, a, a good race horse at all. What are your plans for Glen Thunder after this race? Win, lose, or draw? Uh, well, um, he's going into the Watts Memorial on Monday night at Fairfield, and uh, after that. Uh, well, we're thinking about uh, going to uh, Melbourne with him for the uh, Australian Pacing Championship. Much improvement left? Um, well, that'll be pretty hard to say, really, the way he's been going, Peter, and uh, he's been going very well, and, and if he sort of holds that form, well, we'll certainly consider taking him down there. We had a bit of a thunder shower here earlier tonight. Does that affect the Harold Park surface at all? It's looking reasonably good at the moment. Peter, it does affect the, the surface. Uh, naturally, the track's going to be a bit slow now, but uh, the, the, just looking at the track, it's starting to dry out OK. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, quite, it's quite safe. Uh, it's very safe, and, uh, but it's just a little heavy going, a little bit uh, unpleasant for drivers. Can you tell us a bit about your plans for the start? Where will you be looking to be, at, say, uh, 200 metres after the start? Well, I, I hope to be able to come out quick enough to sort of go across to the lead. And from then? Oh, well, just try to stay there. Well, we've got a team of ABC people here tonight. You obviously think Glenn Sunder's going to win it. What about the Quinella? Oh, well, that's, that's pretty hard. And, uh, I mean, we, we just sort of hope we can win. No dangers to you? Oh, well, there's, there's always dangers in horse racing, Peter. And uh, you never, I never take the opposition too cheap. Uh, my horse is going very well, and he'll be probably the one to beat. But, uh, I mean, the race is not over until it's, it's, it's actually over. 
Well, good luck. We'll let you go and get the silks on now in preparation. Thanks very much, Peter. Vic Frost speaking there with Peter Wilkins. And, of course, Vic Frost associated with some great horses over the years. And who knows, Glen Sunder might be another one to carry the famous black and white colours to some very, very major victories in major events around Australia. Let's go across and have a look at the uh, tote board, which you can see over there, and have a look at the early tote call at the moment. As you can see, just eight minutes to go until this year's ABC Pacific Coast pace. And uh, number one is Heroic Fame, trained and driven by young Darren Binskin. Of course, his father, well known throughout Australia, John Binskin, and, of course, his grandfather, to, uh, to many uh, harness racing followers, will remember the great Jack Binskin. Number two is Bayad Boy. Billy Hansel will drive Bayad Boy. And uh, he's almost out to 33 to 1 there, so quite a big prize. Deep and easy, young Warwick Harper. And uh, he's uh, hails from Dubbo out in the central west of New South Wales. And Deep and Easy has been going very well of late. Two wins at his two most recent starts here at Harold Park. And uh, about a year ago, he scored a very good victory over Paleface Bubble. So uh, certainly if there's going to be any failing in the favourite, number five, Glen's Thunder, maybe Deep and Easy will be the one to find it out. Number four, Welcome Frost, also from the Brian Hancock stable. And uh, his brother Richard will be driving Welcome Frost. He's been in good form this time back. Whether he's quite up to this class, well, we'll wait and find out tonight. Number five, as you can see there, the favourite, Glen Thunder. He's just a touch of odds on at the moment. I still expect him to shorten up quite considerably on that. Unless, of course, uh, the punters have shied away with him drawn out in five and the fact that maybe he mightn't be able to get across to the fence and lead them as expected. Number six, Toby Duane ran a very good fifth in this year's Inter-Dominion Championship. David Aitken, the trainer driver. And uh, Toby hasn't quite come back possibly as well as what he did perform in his last campaign. He's been thereabouts, but he has been struggling to find the winner's circle, although he did manage to find it here three weeks ago in Harold Park. Number seven, Stylish Guy. I think it'll be very hard for Stylish Guy to win this race tonight. His best performances when he's been allowed to bowl along in front and he's drawn seven, the awkward inside of the second row. I think the Ross Chisholm would have to be a magician to be able to angle through and get to the lead from there. But should he do so, he's proved in the past that he's a very tough, hard stayer and very hard to run down. Number eight, Not Before Time, uh, is driven by Ross Adams and trained by the great Merv Adams. And uh, Not Before Time, uh, not quite racing up to the standard in which we saw him perform uh, quite credibly about 12 months ago. But still, of course, uh, luck comes his way in a race like this. He's certainly not out of it. Happy Tolliver, trained and driven by the Marvel man, Joe Ilsley, nearing retirement, Joe. And it'd be great to see Happy Tolliver get home and win another feature race uh, with this great man who's been involved, of course, in uh, recent years with some, uh, some great horses, but uh, the most notable being double agent. And number 10, Bundanoon, who won a heat of the Inter-Dominion uh, a couple of years ago in Adelaide. He also won two more this year in Melbourne. He's trained and driven by Brian Hancock, and Bundanoon also has uh, a second, in fact, behind double agent in the Miracle Mile last year. Bundanoon, he's probably the main danger to uh, Glenn Sunder, and also during the evening, Peter Wilkins managed to catch up with Bundanoon's trainer driver, Brian Hancock. Hancock, Bundanoon tonight in the ABC Pacific Coast Pace. The chances, what do you think? Oh, well, Peter, he's, he hasn't drawn the best of all. He's drawn 10, but he's, you know, he's a great old campaigner and he's done a great job. Uh, I think he's won about 240,000 and he's, he's come up very nice. He ran very good at Bankstown on Monday night. I expect a big shame, but the track's very heavy tonight and, uh, you know, I, I think he ran a real good race. Do you put any sort of ex extra preparation into a race like this or just a normal preparation? Oh, no, it's a prestige race. It's been going, you know, for uh, about 10 years now, I think, and it's, uh, it's a very prestigious race, and you'd like to win these. You know, I think I'm going for my fourth ABC pace, so uh, I'd like to win it, yeah, and it's, uh, you do put a bit of extra effort in it, and uh, he's... Uh, and Bundanoon will arise for the occasion, I hope. Well, that's a pretty good record. What were your other winners? Do you remember? Yeah, I do. I, I think I won the first one ever on Valiant Girl. Uh, she was a bonnie mare. She was a... She's dead, actually, now, but she was a great mare. She won the first one. Uh, I won it on Bundanoon two years ago, and I won it on uh, Jick Adios, so some nice horses have won it. So it's a great race, really. It's, it's sort of built up, and we do get live coverage for this, which is great for harness racing. Now, what about the Drivers' Premiership? You're only a couple off the lead there. Is that anything to worry about, uh, having won it last year? Yeah, I, I won it the last, I think, out of, out of four out of five. But not to worry about it, you know, it's some, some great drivers around, and it's, uh, I'm up thereabouts, and I've got a nice team coming through, so... I hope I get there again this year. Now, what about your plans for Bundanoon? Is Inter Dominion this year? Is that a possibility? Yeah, well, he's he went to the last two Inter Dominions and he's won a, won a heat in Adelaide and won two each in Melbourne this year. His long range forecast is Inter Dominion, I think. He's getting on a bit. He's seven, I think he's eight year old, so I'd say this will be his last year at, at that top level. So I am looking forward to Albion Park and uh, he'll come to hand good. He had a good spell after Melbourne and he's just come back now, so around about April he'll be really firing, I think. 
Now, we've had a lot of delays out here at Harold Park. Uh, I don't think they were caused by the thunderstorm earlier on, although that wouldn't have helped. But what is the story with the, these delays with the, the barrier start? Yeah, it's mobile racing. We've had a few problems with our with the track is in, in shocking condition tonight and um, didn't look like we were going to have them earlier. It's sort of a torrential rain come, as you'd know, and uh, I just think it's one of those nights. It's very unusual. We've had four mo uh, four, four starts in, in, in the first four races, but let's hope the night improves, and I think it will. So... Uh, the people see some good racing. From what you've been watching and, and from being out there, is it just one or two drivers and, and horses that are having the problem, or is it really the whole field picking just, their feet up? It's just the whole the whole track is in, uh, you know, the track's in great order, but it's just one of those nights. I think the horses know it more than we do, I think. They sort of put bung these shows on. I think they know they're on TV and they're bunging these shows on. So, you know, but it'll get better during the night. Um, is it a bit of a shock for you? When, when there's all these false starts going back a few years now when they were, they were doing the standing start. Is that a bit of a shock? Well, Peter, you asked the wrong person because I'm a complete mobile man. I'm, I, I'm all mobile. I think it's the only way we've got to go. And the sooner we get 10 off the front in the mobile, the better. Uh, bigger track. And that which will come, I think, in time. And uh, I think the people will sort of really appreciate harness racing then to, to its fullest. So, you know, I, I, I just don't want standing starts. I think it's got to be all mobile racing. And, uh, and the people want it. The public want it coming through the gates. So... Uh, I think we've just got to go that way and we're sorting it out and we'll, it's just one of those nights. Thanks Brian, good luck. Thanks, thanks Peter. And there's Brian Hancock there, sporting one of the Bell helmets too you'll notice, which are becoming so un uh, accustomed these days for most of the drivers to wear them. And apparently yeah, they do afford more protection and I suppose anything that affords more protection must uh, be good for the industry and Brian Hancock there with Bundanoon has been a great pacer for him over the years. He talked about Jick Adios earlier, of course when Jick Adios won this race uh, three years ago, he was owned uh, by some connections up in Rockhampton and I know they'll be uh, watching in with a lot of keen interest tonight and uh, also uh, many people throughout Queensland and it's great to have uh, all uh, the Queenslanders and the rest of Australia joining us here at Harold Park for this year's ABC uh, Pacific Coast Pace. And uh, there you'll notice coming around the turn into the straight, uh, two of the other favoured ones, the, the very short price favourite, Glenn Sunder there on the inside with the famous Vic Frost colours of white with the black stars and the black cap. We're talking about Queenslanders, remember Lucky Creed? He won 24 in a row before Cocky Raider ended that marvellous sequence of victories. And Vic Frost, of course, uh, drove uh, Lucky Creed to uh, some memorable victories when he's got Glenn Thunder. And the other horse that was just coming down the straight there with Glenn Thunder is, uh, as we go out there a little bit wider on the yellow colours there, is David Aitken. And uh, that's Toby Duane who made the final and ran a very good race in the final of this year's Inter Dominion. You may remember he, uh, he got blocked for a run at a vital stage and finished up running fifth behind uh, that champion Western Australian Pruer Chevalier. And I suppose if he does put his best foot forward tonight, he could well be the major testing material for the odds on favourite, Glenn Sunder. Deep and easy by Ed Boy, Glenn Sunder. Heroic fame, Bundanoon about to uh, come along. Club colours on Welcome Frost, the red and green halves. Totes there yet, Ron? Happy Tolliver. Let, and moving up as let's get him in quickly, eh? Toby okay, number one. seven, Colby's Carrera. 2.30 a win, 85 a place. Number eight, special choice, $2.10. Third number five, which is Kelly Carlin, 70 cents. 2.30 and 85, 2.10 for second, 70 for third after race seven. Other details shortly. They come now. Bayard Boy, heroic fame, moving up. Toby Juwan, stylish guy, coming along, not before time. Deep and easy, welcome Frost, the gate rolls. Heroic fame coming up on the inside. Uh, just a slight hold up, still with Bundanoon back there. Gate not rolling at the moment, Bundanoon. Hancock just calling out to the starter to uh, hold proceedings for a moment. Uh, Bundanoon, uh, oh, he seems to be right. Bundanoon coming forward again. Clear second favourite in the race, Bundanoon. Good second in the Bankstown Cup on Monday to Glen Sunder. That was only second run back from a spell, so he should be much fitter for this race as the gate rolls now and we'll soon have them away for the main event of the night Bundanoon picking up the line on the second line with uh, Happy Tolliver and they're all set ready there's the blue light racing and going out well deep and easy with Welcome Frost and Glenn Sunder out wide is going fast Frost is going to look for the lead they uh, run into the first corner Welcome Frost just has the lead from Glenn Sunder deep and easy back on the rail third followed by Toby Jawan and then a gap to Sartorial Elegance uh, at least a happy Tolliver moving around the outside of heroic fame but he's going to clear them Frost and down the back Glenn Sunder races to the lead a length and a half to deep and easy Welcome Frost trying to get over to the rail from Toby Jawan and 
then heroic fame, Happy Tolliver, a length to stylish guy, Bundanoon. Second last not before time, and a length and a half last is by a boy. Out of the back straight down, Glenn Sunder has got to a clear cut lead, and he runs out by a length and a half to deep and easy. Toby Jawan going up smartly into third around the outside of Welcome Frost now on the rail. Happy Tolliver tracks Toby Jawan, Ford, and Bundanoon tracks Happy Tolliver. On the inside of those was heroic fame. A length and a half away was stylish guy, and they're followed on the outside by not before time and by a boy was last at the judge. And they've got two laps to go, passing the winning post, and Glenn Sunder getting things made to water again in front. He leads out a length and a half to deep and easy. Toby Juwan on the outside. A length to welcome Frost on the inside of Happy Tolliver, one out, one back. Then Bundanoon on the inside as heroic fame, a length and a half stylish guy, then not before time, and by a boy was last. Up the back, about 1,300 metres to go, and Glenn Sunder is the clear leader. A length and a half to Toby Juwan, forced the race without cover tonight. Neck away, third on the fence, deep and easy. One out, one back, Happy Tolliver. Fifth on the inside is Welcome Frost, a length, Bundanoon. And then on the inside is Heroic Fame, a length and not before time. Stylish guy is second last and starting to pull a bit there. And second last with the do on the outside now, Bayard Boy, not before time, just up ahead of it as they approach the corner. The bell coming up now, and Glenn Sunders doing it well again as he comes into the straight for the bell by nearly a length. Toby Juwan second, deep and easy, third on the back of the leader. One out, one back is Happy Tolliver. The pace has been pretty solid. Over on the fence, running fifth is Welcome Frost, then Bundanoon, who's been driven along at this stage, followed by Heroic Fame, not before time, and Stylish Guy and Bayard Boy of the Tailenders. Into the back the last time, and Glenn Sunder at the 600, still defying them clearly. He's a link to Toby Juwan, deep and easy, and then Happy Tolliver on the outside from Welcome Frost, Bundanoon being driven along, and then a gap to Heroic Fame, not before time, Bayard Boy and Stylish Guy at the 400, and Glenn Sunder's making them chase him again, he's going for three in a row, and he's clear a length to Toby Jawan, deep and easy. Bundanoon plugging on around the outside, Happy Tolliver the setter, and then welcome Frost and the gap to not before time. Coming to the corner though, and Glenn Sunder, Frost looks across, he gives him a little bit more leather, he gets two lengths to Bundanoon, Toby Jawan, and then deep and easy, and welcome Frost, but it's all Glenn Sunder. Bundanoon goes to a clear second, and then Toby Jawan, but it's Glenn Sunder's well clear. Bundanoon's game, he's making a good race of it, but Glenn Sunder's holding him safely, and Glenn Sunder wins at three quarters of a length of Bundanoon. Toby Jawan's hung on for third, just in front of Welcome Frost. Then deep and easy, not before time, followed in by Bayard Boy. Well back in the field, Happy Tolliver, heroic fame, and last was Stylish Guy. Well, it's pretty hard to beat him once he gets to the lead, Glenn Sunder. If you go up and attack him, well, you're just ruining your own chance because he can just uh, keep running fast sectional times, runs them off their legs, and they just can't get close to him, and that makes it three straight, the JPS Cup, the Bankstown Cup, and the Pacific Coast Pace. And uh, Glenn Sunder, he's certainly proving a great money spinner this season for Vic and Margaret Frost. He's won, um, well, he's won over $75,000 just this season so far since August. Glenn Sunder, number five, to pay 65 and 60 by Grand Thor from Dotty's Cape. Second, number 10, Bundanoon, a good game run. Gee, he just keeps getting to the line, Bundanoon. He'll pay 75, Brian Hancock aboard. He was being driven hard at the bell, but that's Bundanoon. He looks gone at that stage. He just keeps plugging on, and he's got to the line strongly to be beaten just a little bit under a length, and you'll find Toby Juwan has hung on in a photo to get third at $1.40. Well, those three places, paces filled the placings in the uh, Bankstown Cup on Monday night in that order, and they've done exactly the same again, providing Toby Juwan gets his third, of course, which I think he will just in front of Welcome Frost. And the selections in straight uh, trifecta order by Kevin Thompson again for the numbers 5, 10 and 6, not official yet. The daily double, when confirmed, Glenn's Thunder with uh, the first leg winner for Smoky Euchre to return $2.15. Sydney race 7 has time to go... Bundanoon actually finished second to Glen Sunder last Monday night in the, the Bankstown Cup. So he's probably getting sick to death at the rear end of Glen Sunder this week. Just waiting for the third placing. Won't be too long. I think that Toby Duane might have lasted, but the longer the photo goes, the more likelihood that Welcome Frost will get the photo as far as uh, these trifecta punters are concerned. And as Vic Frost brings Glenn Thunder back now to the cheers of the crowd, uh, he's uh, put up another great effort. And this uh, beautiful looking horse, he really is. And you can see there that 
Not that much mud managed to get onto Vic Frost as he uh, had the race in his keeping a long way from home, being able to lead all the way. Some of the other drivers who were back in the field had bespattered with mud. Brian Hancock's brought Bundanoon back into the second slot, but this photo for third must be very, very tight. As I said, Toby Joanna just looked on that very, very slow replay. It looked as if he got it, but it's very tight. Of course, the ABC Pacific Coast Pace, it's uh, a trophy and prize money of $10,000. There it is. And the director of television for the ABC, Mr. Richard Thomas, will be making the presentation to the owners and connections of Glen Thunder. It just happened to be Margaret and Vic Frost. Margaret Frost, Vic Frost's wife, of course, in her own right, a leading trainer driver. Vic Frost, the trainer driver, by Grand Thor out of Dotty's Cape, a brown horse four years, and as always happens in big races, when you're uh, stuck for time, there'll be a photo or a protest. As someone said to me, whenever it's pouring rain and you're at the back of the mulga, waiting to get home somewhere or look for the comfort of a bit of shelter, it'll always be the last race that'll cause the, uh, the long delay. Well, here at the moment, we're just waiting for this long delay of the photo. Would have been a bit of money too because both those horses would have been probably the, the favoured horses to run third in the event so probably a lot of money here riding on uh, trifectas with uh, 5, 10 and 4 and 5, 10 and 6 probably being the popular elects in the trifectas right round Australia. That won't surprise me if this is a dead heat considering the delay We've seen them here before. As you can hear in the background, uh, the judge is still looking at the print. He's having a very, very close examination of it. It is a dead heat for third. There it is, it's a dead heat for third. So here in the ABC Pacific Coast pace, number five, Glen Thunder, Vic Frost first. Number 10, Bundanoon, Brian Hancock second, Glen Thunder. Of course, trained and driven by Vic Frost. Second, number 10, Bundanoon, trained and driven by Brian Hancock. And the dead heaters for third, number four, Welcome Frost, trained by Brian Hancock, driven by his brother, Richard Hancock. The other dead heater, number six, Toby Duane, trained and driven by David Aiken. And on the New South Wales TAB, the winner will return 65 and 60. That's all. David Morrow for ABC Sport.